Hi folks, let's walk through camming up this lathe part. But let's do it with both an aspect on getting a really quick idea for quoting the job on machine time. Then let's finish it up with really good cam, but again, a focus on how quickly we can get the right tool path we want. There's some pretty good uh, tips and tricks coming here. Welcome to the Fusion Friday. This is a part that a customer emailed us the F3D file on. Normally, we would expand our data panel and we would go to upload. You don't have to do that though. And a lot of times if it's a really quick quote or I'm not sure I'm gonna win it, I don't wanna invest a lot of time in <laughs> uploading it, I'll go to file, new design from file, terrible name, but that lets me double click on an F3D file or I just step, etc and it opens right up. There's no saving, there's no uploading, it's very, very quick. It's still a good idea to save it though for obvious reasons of creating a backup. I like to do a really quick sanity check, make sure the file's okay. In this case, I wanna make sure it's one body. That confirms to me that the part was modeled up correctly and there's no remnants or mismodeled things that are gonna give us problems when we cam it up. Switch over to cam. New setup. Switch operation type to turning. Switch our stock, top center tab, to relative size box. I'm gonna change my roundup field to point uh, 0.125. And that's gonna tell me, oops, let's actually switch our mode to relative size cylinder. There we go. So wh why the roundup to nearest? Well, that's helpful because it tells me the diameter I need to go find a piece off the shelf that's two and a quarter diameter, perfect. We'll go back to setup, and I'm gonna flip my Z axis so that it's pointing the other way. Uh, you might say we're good. One thing I want you to get in the habit of, generally speaking, is to check spun profile. What that does is that there are features on here that it's not sure how to handle because they're milling type features. You know, let's say you had a hex pattern. Well, we can't turn that hex pattern. So spun profile spins it around and it takes basically the furthest extent of the geometry. If you're not sure what that means or you're confused, again, generally recommend checking spun profile. Click okay. Believe it or not, we're most done. Right click, create from template, lathe. Now you're not gonna have that option. Uh, we do share for folks that support the channel on Patreon, our templates, they are huge. I cannot emphasize this enough. Make your templates, especially on lathe work. Here's why. It does almost all the hard work for you. It prevents you from having to reinvent the wheel. It lets you save certain tools. Like we've got this Sandvik button groove tool that I love, but I'm very particular about how we run it. I take the time, I set that up and I save it and that remembers all those settings. So I don't have the drill, it won't work until I edit and I pick that hole, click okay. Threading, there wasn't any here. Uh, boring usually takes a little bit more work, we're gonna go through that in a second. Backside chamfer, sometimes that's the same thing, but I know that backside chamfer feature doesn't take very long. What takes most of the time? Hogging that material out. So at this point I can right click, machining time, now pay attention, your rapid feed rates matter. So this is garbage in, garbage out. You need to make sure uh, that you, you know, run a couple parts, compare this, get an idea. I'm usually less concerned about the seven minutes and 24 seconds and more concerned with knowing when I run these parts on the machine, is that what it's really at? But it gives me this ballpark idea. Card here to the video that we did a few years back on how we quote work, including the Excel file that we use to build out quotes, but sometimes I don't even wanna spend the time to do that. I just wanna give it a really quick estimate. I now know, again, seven and a half minutes or so, we buy most of our aluminum from either Alro or Yard Metals. Alro has an online metal calculator that anybody can use, so buy metals, aluminum, 6061 round, it is two and a quarter. And we're gonna do custom cut. Let's say we wanted 20 of these. Length is 1.875. I'm gonna buy it with about three eighths of an inch extra because I would have to turn these one at a time. Depending on how you do the second operation or what your lathe capability is, you may be able to bar feed them and do shorter and so forth. But nevertheless, 1.875 plus 0.3875 two and a quarter long, 2.25, 2 
add to cart and look, you get a quote for your material. I, we actually usually get a little bit better pricing uh, than this over the website, but it gives me a ballpark idea. So eight bucks for the material. Most shops, including ours, will mark it up some amount. But that's one of the things I like about doing this. Job shop can be tough. If it's 20 parts and I've got, say, 10 bucks in material, I'll round that up just quick and dirty. And let's say it's gonna take me 10 minutes to do one of them. So plus 10 times the asterisk in Excel, that means 200 minutes, plus this divided by 60, three and a half hours or so ballpark. Let's say I wanna make 75 bucks an hour, plus this times that. So I wanna make $250 for the machining work, and it's $10 in material plus Ten dollars times. I'm typing plus, by the way, because you should type. You can type equal as well, but it's quicker on the number pad to type plus, and it does the same thing. Plus ten dollars times twenty quantity is another two hundred dollars. So what that tells me, not counting the programming time or the setup time, the two hundred fifty dollars for my machining time plus the two hundred dollars in material, four hundred fifty dollars. This is what I like as the smell test. It's sort of saying, do I want to do this job for $450? That's a good business decision you've got to think about. I'm not making much money at all on the material. Um, that is profit, but do I need to buy special tooling? How much setup risk is there? How much setup time is there? Just food for thought. Now, let's take this cam though, and let's drive it home. Face, usually I'm good with. Don't do a lot to, to uh, on it. One tip, you can improve the life of your tools by putting a little spot drill at the end of your part, and that way when you face it, you don't run into the issue where your facing tool hits zero surface feet per minute at the very tip. OD profiling looks good. Take a quick peek. Obviously, you'll wanna change your surface footage and chip per rev or feed per rev for the material and the machine you're running it on. But again, this one's pretty darn good at being a parametric template, so you don't tend to have to mess with much on it. Grooving, you may not think we need a grooving tool on this part, especially because we just OD turned all this, but take a look. Lathe tools have most, at least, uh, have radii or radiuses on the tips. So when we finish, we go to simulate, we finish the OD profiling with our CNMG type tool, we've got this radius in here. Now, I would say it's a lot of times you may want that as avoiding a stress riser, but if the customer wants or needs it as a sharp corner, the grooving automatically came in here and finished that corner. You can see it actually is only blue right there. That's where it saw material. The grooving tools are not always easy to set up. Works great though when you've got that saved. I would probably make one change. I would probably go into passes and add stock to leave of one thousandth of an inch, both radial and axial. That's gonna keep it off the wall and the floor by one thousandth of an inch, because I don't want that to show a little ring here or rub. Depends on, again, the quality of your machine, the quality of the work, tolerances, etc. We don't need the Sandvik button tool here, so just delete it. Drill, I just picked. Boring, we'll come back to. That's gonna be tricky. This backside chamfer, right now the parting op in Fusion doesn't allow you to accommodate things like backside chamfers or fillets. So I made a template uh, op that has this. So we need to edit it. And under geometry, we need to change the front side stock offset to be a little bit less than the length of your part. So if I click here, and hold control and click here, it's 1.75. So let's reduce that by about one eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna say negative 1.75 plus 0.125, click okay. Look, this is amazing. This took me a while to figure out. I don't have to worry about it anymore. It's like speed dial. It's in there, it's good, done. Simulate, turn the stock off. Left click, or you know the regular mouse button, and drag. So I'm gonna left click, hold, drag over. Do that a couple of times, and you can watch this. Really nice way to see what's happening. It's weird with lays because the control point of the tool is over here, so that's what's driving the tool path, but we're actually cutting on the back edge. So as it sweeps across, perfect. And then finally, a part. I do one thing on the part. I'll show you here, if you can see with stock. 
is I leave one eighth of an inch. That way, a lot of times I'd rather it part but leave a little bit and then I'll grab the part out and break it off by hand. If you want to run it all the way down, go into heights or radii and change that inner radius from the one eighth inch that I have to zero. So we're almost done. Let's fix that bore. I think this is a great example of another way Fusion can help you run your shop. I need to put that ID fillet on there and this tool is too big. So let's edit. And when you hear me joke about this, when I say I hate lathes, it is a joke, folks. But, I, you know, I'm a mill guy. I'm not a lathe guy. Lathes are a hassle to me. It's cool when they do work. The problem is this tool is too big. So rather than go browse through, whether it's shards or Sandvik, um, let's go look right here. And let's say, well, if I drop it down to a smaller IC or inscribed circles, uh, the smallest here is this 1.2. That looks like it might work a lot smaller at least, holder to reduce that shank. Let's say we have a quarter inch shank. Let's see here, 0 0.15, 0 0.135 or something. All right, now I need to make sure I can buy or make this sort of a boring bar for sure, but I now understand, okay, well, let me make sure I get a tool path here, but this is the kind of IC I need to be hunting for to get this job done. Click okay, click yes. Okay, uh, let's just click okay again here and see what we get. So it's not working, that's okay. Right click, usually these exclamation points aren't that helpful, yeah. Thanks for telling me it took you 150 milliseconds to generate no error uh, message. Um, passes, radio, let's pick radii first. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's my mistake. I've got a bad, uh, I made a mistake in my template. I shouldn't have these hard-coded uh, diameter. So you can see it's only eligible to work between the outer radius, which is the um, blue, and the inner, which is the dark blue, with the orange being our clearance. The clearance should really be like 0.1. Inner radius should be model ID and with no offset. Sorry, and this should be outer radius, probably should be stock OD with no offset. So this is also one reason why, that's awesome, I think it worked. Uh, you've got to create a template file that you can repost your template from because I made a mistake. This uh, bore operation is not done correctly in my template. So the only way to edit that is to go back to kind of my template master, radii, and I'll fix it. Better point one. Okay. Once it's fixed, click on the first operation, Shift click the last one, right click, store as template. I, they need to create a pop-up name so you can overwrite the last one. I happen to remember this one's called Lay. So then you'd click OK, overwrite it. That's how you update your templates. That's the key to, to a successful recipe with templates. And if you take a look, I've now got that working. Simulate, again, left click drag to watch it, how I'm gonna to switch to wireframe view here. Zoom in. Perfect. Uh, I've got some sort of a defect on my tool holder. I don't know much about this, which is why I'm getting those collisions. I think that's my goof on the uh, tool holder set up with this little flange here. Maybe that's a fusion error, I don't know. Regardless, if this were my actual tool holder, I can tell you I'd be fine. Folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you next Friday.